Welcome back, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here. And even if this isn't a welcome back, just a welcome, that's great. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Love to see you around more often. And if you would just, you know, do me a bit of a favor to help get more visibility for this channel, hit the like button for this video, please. I'll give you a moment. Have you reduced the screen down and hit the line? Okay, there you go. Thanks so much for doing that. I really appreciate that. It does help um, visibility considerably. Okay, well, let's get back into Japan. 1936 in September, or just the very end thereof. Recently, just as in moments before starting this episode was asked about ICs and if I had um, any heavy industry and I think I have one here but it is in a maxed out province so I can't build more. An event can dump more um, than the max 10 but I can't build past 10. Um, yeah, so I can't, I can't improve on that. I was also asked about mountain divisions, and I figure if somebody's asking me, other people may have this in mind. Was I going to build any for the war in China? Um, well, for the war in China, I don't know. There are lots and lots of mountains. I would like some mountain divisions. I plan on building some mountain divisions, um, but even if they don't come by the time we're in China, um, we've got lots of places, whether in Burma or other, even if we move into India or, you know, you can see many other places to use even down here. This is the Philippines. I know there's mountains there. I, 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 there's no snow in the Philippines. Uh, they don't even know what that is there, really. Oh, of course, you know, they've not experienced it, maybe, should I say, those in the Philippines. Yes, there's lots of Filipinos that travel overseas and whatnot, but those that haven't left the Philippines never experienced so snow okay heavy AA guns advance very good that is here we're gonna stop that we're not gonna push ahead I am being very um, cautious with my research and date time kind of things okay yes we want good ground crews sorry everyone especially you guys who've been around for a long time I do know that there's a really great core audience that have been around since either the very first German series or fairly into things and they've heard all this before but I do from um, interaction with people know that there's new people coming plus I also someday I hope the channel will blow up um, so uh, one of my sort of ph philosophies is, is something like TAC pilot Okay, yes, more organization, more morale, absolutely good, okay? Absolutely good, and this holds a little more true for some of these techs as well. Um, absolutely good. But if my tech, say, isn't so great, it can still bomb uh, ground units fairly well. Um, yes, they can have better anti-aircraft and whatever, but... It's sort of them versus the ground, mostly. And of course, air can attack them. But what, to me, is critical is my fighters versus my opponents, my enemies' fighters. That is a criti critical comparison. Um, it's not how good my fighters are. That, in, a mat in, a, in, in one manner of speaking, it doesn't matter how good my fighters are. It just matters that my fighters are better than the enemy's fighters. Yes, better is better. No doubt, you know, better stats are going to, even if mine are better, if they're even, if they're on an order, order, uh, order of magnitude better, they will win faster. They will do, you know, do better. Absolutely. So, so absolute v values do matter. And to some degree, you know, these are coming in here. You know, how much air attack does um, does it have or how much ground attack or whatever yes that all sort of matters this all gets pushed off the screen you can't see it um, that absolutely does matter but to me it doesn't as matter as much as the competition between um, other air units so like heavy AA guns yep better is better but um, 
it's not my heavy AA guns got to be 5% better or 10% better than the enemy's heavy AA guns. It's just better is better. Okay, yes. Um, would like supplies. Okay, well. Um, okay. We'll sell supplies. Grease supplies a lot. That probably won't last very long either. Eh, it may not last very long either, but hey, Columbia. Go ahead. Yeah, we're not doing Mei Zhang. Sure, my accent's wrong for it, but I hope I'm sort of kind of get the pronunciation of some of those things right. Now, okay, is it the Heisenberg principle or something along those lines? Is that when you observe something, or, or is it maybe more the observer effect, I should be saying? Um, when you observe something, it behaves different than when you don't. That's one of the theories, I will say. I'll call it a theory. And, um, oh, it was light being split or, or atoms being gone through two different paths and, um, how once you observed it, they all went one way instead of the other way. And, you know, this is down on the, um, like electron scale, not just a molecule, but much smaller and whatever. But I've often wondered about that, um, then we'll get to why I'm sort of was wondering about this at the moment. But um, I often wondered whether it's not whether we were observing them or not makes them react differently, but the manner or method that we use to be able to observe them influences their behavior. Okay. You know, meaning um, to be able to put... Um, you know, get a camera there that you you put on a certain type of light and whatnot, and that, you know, light waves going through it or whatever somehow has some sort of effect on it that we don't understand. Okay. Well, the reason is I'm playing right now with my, um, you know, uh, task manager open for the performance, CPU performance to sort of watch what's going on. And when I was... Um, playing with all of the sub mods I'm only playing with black ice now and well into the last series one of my CPUs was basically permanently maxed out right now um, none of them seem to be over um, over halfway right now but of course we're at pause um, so that really you know, I'm wondering if the uh, performance is being changed because I am having, you know, task manager open and looking at it and that just to sort of see what my system to some degree is doing. Light infantry branch, that would be good. I think we will. Desert equipment, Arctic warfare equipment. We very well may do these someday, but they obviously are 1940s technology. We won't do them anytime soon, and even then, I don't know when we're getting to a desert or a um, Arctic situation where it's cold enough. And one CPU, once things are sort of rocking and rolling a bit, we're looking a bit more at um, one third. Now, one thing that I am sure affects, now I don't know how big of effects, whether it's it's minuscule or major, um, especially in the last series um, that I'm recording the software, or I'm recording the, the um, yeah, we'll sell to try to sure, um, has to affect um, stability, you know, um, CPU usage, GPU usage. So I've often thought that what I'm playing is maybe a bit more unstable because of um, having to have other things open at the same time. 
And that is one of the things is, that has sort of influenced me not to stream Hearts of Iron 3 so much is just because streaming is another process. Even though I use the same be same set of software to both stream and record, it's still two different processes. And it has two different outputs of quality. One is tailored for the um, Twitch um, preferred streaming uh, quality. And I can do that just fine quality wise and upload stream, you know, without any um, uh, buffering on my end. I know that uh, some people that have either been in Britain or in um, Romania sometimes have had um, buffering problems or in India and not for other people. So it isn't necessarily a, um, a Twitch thing. I see necessarily because Twitch is primarily uh, an American based um, company with American based viewers, although they are trying or they, they are trying to reach out to the, the entire world. Um, they do have servers, I believe in Europe or something. So um, it could still be something that is a little bit more targeted for um, uh, just Twitch, but it may also be just regional providers might, might be the problem as well and not specifically with Twitch, but so I'm able to luckily now that I have my much better um, connections to stream just what Twitch wants and at Twitch, yeah, I don't know if this will get YouTube all up in a lather because I'm saying Twitch so much, but um, just the quality and um, consistency of the stream to, to match that, but I record at a higher quality level for my YouTube presentations because they can do a higher a, a higher um, standard and I don't go to the highest well don't even go to the the highest um, you know uh, 4k or whatever I my monitor can't handle I just there's no point in me trying to even record that and um, 95 plus percent of you or more do not watch in 4k okay we've got motorcycle recon unit formations um, don't know that the Japanese used much of those. Obviously, Japan had motorcycles and knew what they were, but I don't think they used them as a um, sort of largest scale reconnaissance type um, formation. Um, I'm, I'm presuming dispatch riders and a few things like that, so it's not like whether I, I'm not picturing one, I can't remember a single picture of, and I'm collecting more and more now, uh, Japanese um, military images. One, you know, either graphical image, meaning, you know, not a, a photo, but a, um, I've been collecting a lot of interesting graphics that you, you're seeing for some of the thumbnails, uh, you know, that feature aircraft and ships and tanks. And they're often very stylized to the, to the artwork of the time, and they're not even trying to represent... Um, Correct. They're just they're just doing it as a as a, a graphics art thing, and I think that's really cool. And I, I you know I don't don't know whether sometimes stuff is um, like I just the maybe two episodes ago now used an uh, an anime still for um, from a uh, uh, show I haven't seen it of. Um, I don't know if whether you want to call it a movie or a TV show or whatever, but an anime of the hist uh, or the story uh, biography of the main guy who designs the Zero. Um, I'm blanking on the name right now. Is was used there with him sort of walking in front of a bunch of guys pushing a, a like fighter aircraft forward. I don't know if it's supposed to be a Zero or not. I presume. Um, and I don't know whether that's going to really push down viewership for this. Um, Sometimes I know I use an image that, for various reasons, um, that will lower the clicks on it. And other times, I know it. I know the images images will jump up, particularly if I haven't used Hitler for a while and put Hitler on it. Man, there's about a 30% jump in clicks. But if I hit do Hitler two or three days in a row, it starts to trickle down. So I do know that 
um, it really affects how much um, things get clicked and so I don't know whether having an anime thing will mean a lot of people somehow see it and think that it's an anime even though the, the, the written description clearly says what this thing is and it still has the Hearts of Iron 3 logo on it so I'm not trying to fool anybody into thinking it's anime though some people may not take the microseconds to read that and just click um, but I'm really just more trying to go somebody Hearts of Iron 3 they have that anime I just gotta see what that is not that I'm trying to fool somebody so so I use some of that so Obviously, that all matters, um, but I have, so like I say, I'm collecting a lot of Japanese images. Um, I've not seen the motorcycle used much in any sort of graphical representation styles, or I cannot remember a photograph of like a bunch of guys on motorcycles, you know, like you, like the German motorcycle reconnaissance stuff. Not saying they don't exist, just saying I, I haven't seen them. Okay, small warship sonar. Now, sometimes when I say I haven't seen them on something and they don't exist, it's I've seen a you know a great portion of this stuff, and since I haven't seen it, it probably doesn't exist. <clears throat> this is just more of a statement of ignorance as opposed to claims that okay we've got that claims that it just isn't going to be. Okay, atomic research, we're going to stay far away from that. We're not going to waste our time. Okay, well, let's come down. Got those operating. We got a couple of these. We got fighters, so we're going to come back direct fire unit training. We have two slots that we can fill, I think. Yeah. Or one and one fifteenths. Okay. So we just, yeah. Mm, I don't know. Whatever. It was hardly anything. So yeah, I'm still looking up at my second screen to see how CPU. Nothing's being hit very hard, but it's working away. Utilization is at 20, oh, 19 down. Processes, threads, I don't even know what a lot of this actually represents, but yeah. No, we're doing okay for energy. Just maybe barely, but we're doing okay. Okay, we've gotten through our first batch of first three or so. Oh wow, we need to really sh change that for at least briefly. Um, to get our reinforcements. Okay, hydrophones advanced and sonar detection equipment. Um, yep, stop that. And is that sonar detection equipment? Yeah, 37. Okay, well, we're going to wait on that and go back to this. Let's do, well, especially pre-36. So the Kempetai needs to be better organized. Okay, well, we've now, because of the increased number of factories, we have now pushed ourselves into needing more energy. Um, let's see. Um, German often has plenty of energy. Okay, um, yeah, stop now. Let's... Oh, well... Don't know why that just changed. Okay, infantry support weapons have advanced. Very nice. Well, that's the wrong tab. Um, yes, yeah, so we want to get out of that. And we will come over here. Ah, yes, I see the mobile unit up top. And yep, that's what we're going to do. 
get that better organized and now that we have reinforced things I instead of keeping for whatever attritional reasons we're facing needing to reinforce stuff I am much rather do that than let that continue to build up and we're almost done with that so that would go as get us another seven ICs or so Um. Okay. Uh. Well. See, that's a mega deposit there. That's pretty big as well. So what we're going to do here is... Um, rares extraction, coal mine. We'll do a coal mine there. Not as big, but still. No, I'd rather have it in Japan. Uh, Yeah, I think, oh, Port Arthur, well, no, not worth doing. Okay, this isn't, um, no. Okay, I think the two, and you can see I do want to, well, the other thing I have put into the queue, haven't obviously started any production. As you can see, these are almost virtually the same, um, uh, cost though this one I think is actually via stats more soft killing uh, same amount of hard kill if I think between them um, and uh, penetration isn't really much of an issue when we're facing the Chinese these are made to be um, once I get proper motorized um, support unit I'll add it to this but I wanted to get I wanted two fast units um, they have no artillery obviously um, that would slow them down again if I'm thinking motorized support which would add a little bit of artillery effect to it um, for the combined arms and such so this I think is a little better but you know a full amount of armor regiment full motorized regiment with just support so I want to get those but we're gonna move these to the top these will be much quicker to build than a full IC um, yeah Okay, what are you guys? Um, yeah. Okay, well, like I sort of kind of thought that we need some. Not a whole lot, but what I will again, diplomacy. I would rather buy from Germany, offer trade agreement. We want to buy. Um, yeah, not even one of the money. Ah, uh, well, let's, let's stockpile a little bit, just up to 10 in energy, because we will be, obviously, expanding our ICs a little bit, continuing here. Not just from, like, conquest or something, eventually, but internally. And, of course, we'll be expanding our coal production, because of what I'm doing as well, here. See, so that's December 36, so shortly. So those will happen shortly, where these are still much, much longer and further out. Okay, now, um, what is Bulgaria? We give them money for metal. Um, I'm not really that worried about... Okay, yeah, no, they're going to disappear. Um, we'll wait till Germany can... Um, yeah, they have, they have a major surplus, which of course they didn't historically. Yes, I know you guys can trade with me, but I'm trying to bring myself closer to Germany. And for whatever reason, it's bumped up a little bit. 
Are we back now? No, uh, the 19th. Okay. Three more days. We can last it at three more days out. And we don't need that, so focusing a bit more there. And let's pause this. Let's bring this down just a little more. There we go. And I'd rather, like I say, buy from Germany. Prove our relations, okay. Let's go, because we have enough, well, that's fine. We can stockpile it up some, and we really should. Probably even more than that. We'll think about that. Yeah, we should have a bigger, ah, okay. We are building fairly quickly up our officer base. Although, of course, we're not expending any appreciable, appreciable amounts of officers in combat or other things. There might be some minor attrition. Um, and we're not expanding our army so or navy much, so that isn't affecting that. So right now we're, we're doing well. Armor fighting vehicles and tracks. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. Okay, which allows us armor plate thickness and tank destroyer. Okay, tank destroyer, interesting. We're not going to be, again, we're not going to be facing those for, unless somehow we get into the Soviet thing and we're going to try not to. Armor plate thickness, that would be worthy of doing. Yeah, that looks fairly well balanced out. Oh good, we're now actually starting to build a... new crown units. We have... haven't really moved them around much. Um, no, where are they? They're, oh, they're up here. We have a big stack of some like cavalry units. These guys can hold the line, I presume, but also can um, move fairly quickly to exploit breakthroughs. Um, well, that'd be a nice sort of punching unit. Uh, a bunch of these other units, and we may make some um, that are hopefully be able to hold the front line, but I want to I think I can do it better with this than I do, especially using a co these, a couple of these guys, these heavy infantry tanks. Really punch through wherever there may be a main a defense and then have some fast divisions to encircle and um, destroy large pockets. That's sort of what I'm hoping to do with the Chinese. Okay, large fuel tank research has advanced and the four engine, um, these things. Oh, wait a minute, did they advance? Um, okay. Oh, they just stopped. They just grayed out. Okay, good. Um, 
Okay, so now we're there with that. I don't know if we're going to bother. Bomb, how many bombers? That we're looking at doing up soon, but maybe not just yet. Uh, okay, well. Let's, because so far, I don't know if it's something that, again, I just don't know. We currently only have mixed support, even though we can research, and I did um, pick out the areas, obviously, why some are great for motorized. And I'm thinking, though I'm far from sure, it may be tied to some level of this, or motor, oh, motorized support units. Oh, there we go. That's it, because I'm just, I think this is normally already done for Germany or something, so, um, yeah, they already have it at start. So I'm not used to So in 37, we'll do that. Um, well, which tells me we don't need to start there. We'll start here. These, these research fast, so we'll start with that. And engineer. And Germany. Um, we give them... Okay. We've got plenty of money coming in. And let's see, I want to buy more steel from them. We're stockpiling some steel. Yeah, we'll probably expand our steel factory soon here, but this also helps us spend the money on things. I know we could cut down our supply selling um, to a degree, but... Um, and it helps improve relations with Germany. Okay, radios have advanced. Very good. And so basically 38, well, 37 if we get tank radios at some point. We're done, though I'll probably check back here more often than I need to. Um... And no industrial, okay. Okay, the anti common turn pact. The anti common turn pact was concluded between Nazi Germany and the Empire of Japan, later to be joined by other countries on November 25th, 1936, and was directed against com uh, Communist International, the common turn in general, and the Soviet Union in particular. Now, um, if I remember correctly, um, the anti common turn pact was proposed by Hungary. And, you know, particularly uh, Horthy, Admiral Horthy, the regent, um, the admiral, I, I love this, the admiral regent of the kingdom of Hungary. So you have a landlocked country with no navy. I mean, they may have had an official river naval force for the um, Danube River or something, but no navy is ruled by, as a kingdom, without a king ruled by an admiral. I just, the, the, just the irony there is just just incredible. Uh, you know, kingdom without a king. Yeah, the king's living in Paris, or the rightful king is living in Paris. He sort of would take the. Um, I say he sort of would take the Hungarian crown. Probably he would have. But one thing you have to know, um, and yeah, through something I briefly had correspondence. Basically, a letter or two went back and forth. Is all. Um, with him and um, uh, Otto uh, Habsburg much, much later in life, obviously. And at that time, he was... Uh, um, I, uh, 
member of whatever the EU Parliament was at that point, if I remember correctly. And this was many years ago. So, meaning I never even met the guy. You know, don't, don't, I'm not trying to name drop really, but just because of that many years ago and whatever, I sort of know that he and his family going way back, way back, are very much internationalists. They're very much not nationalists. The Habsburg sort of whole basic, um, I mean, they, you got to realize, they, they wanted to be the, the, um, the emperors of, of Europe, uh, of a new Europe. And that goes way back, um, not just to the Holy Roman Empire, but just sort of, you know, because you're talking out in Spain for a while, the Habsburg ruled in, in Spain and other places, the Netherlands and such, as well as, of course, the, you know, uh, American colonies, mostly in South America, obviously, but, um, you know, the Habsburgs ruled a lot. And they, they wanted to, to do a sort of internationalist viewpoint. And um, so would Otto, and, you know, sometimes, how do I put this? It's not that you're, you're grasping for just any power or any opportunity, you know, to improve yourself. But um, sometimes you may think, well, I have this opportunity, it'll get us back to here, and then we'll work to get to other places, it just as a stepping stone for the greater goal, for the greater good of the Habsburg um, international, if you will, monarchy, as opposed to that, that they very well may have taken something. But I can see, you know, in, at least in theory, the idea that um, Otto may have turned down the kingdomship of Hungary. Definitely, I could see him turning it down in 1944 as the Soviets are approaching the border and um, the um, the Hungarians are in revolt from the, the Nazis and trying to go, well, we're no longer fascists. We, we just thrown off the arrow cross and we're no longer fascists and we reject all, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, Nazis and our, our former association with them. But we're also not communists, so we're going to go neutral now and just all leave us alone. I could easily see him going, uh, yeah, uh, no, thank you guys screwed it up so much, uh, and I can't fix it, so I'm not going to, you know, publicly get on and, you know, sink with the ship. So, yes, I could definitely see conditions, or if you're having some sort of rabid nationalist sort of Aerocross regime, but for some reason they want the the Habsburg monarchy back as some sort of figurehead, and he's just going, uh, no, not with you guys. Even if even if you're being successful, not with you guys. So you know, and so I can definitely see um, conditions that he would absolutely say no. But I do think in general. Had the conditions been right for either Austria or Hungary or both, um, preferably I'm sure he would like both, um, even if they're separate countries, um, had returned back to the monarchy of either one of them. It would have been interesting. Hitler, of course, um, hated the Habsburgs in general, and so it transfers to Otto, though I don't think there's any particular thing that Otto did that pissed him off personally on, on Otto, but he hates Otto, has all of Otto's property confiscated in Austria when he takes it over, but at the same time approving and supporting the Kaiser's exile, you know, um, giving money for that. Um, not that he wanted the Kaiser back. Hitler did not want the Kaiser back. Hitler was burning down the old system. If some of the old elites, you know, the old um, titled type people move to new national socialist ideals and whatnot okay you can come along it wasn't a you know a, a, a communist or a jacobin or whatever who's going to cut off everybody's old regime's head but either you're going into the dustbin of history yeah you're the count of so-and-so and that's your your one room little apartment up there you know and sure or you are on board with the system the new system including you know various land reforms and other things but you can be a powerful person within the new system if you choose to be and get on board. You know, Hitler is definitely able to go either way. But 
um, he doesn't even give a chance for um, Otto to come to Austria. He doesn't give him, he confiscates not just the crown jewels that were still in Austria and other things like that, that, but he also confiscates anything that would be considered personal, like land property or whatever, of the Habsburgs as opposed to, um, you know, property that might sort of be, you know, governmental property. Um, you know, so it confiscates every, every bit of bank accounts, anything that um, Otto or the Habsburgs have their name on when he takes over Austria. So he is not a fan of Austria. Or, or of the Habs well he's not even a fan of Austria because he's even though he is Austrian he loves Austria as a place but not as a country he wants Germany Großdeutschland that's what he wants not Austria and that's sort of why Otto represents that so you don't see uh, the Nazis the Germans pushing to get um, Otto in charge of Hungary at all and there are um, massive international particularly regional international um, push to keep uh, him out of being king of Hungary as well. Worrying about Hungary trying to re-get back territory is what people are worried about there. So um, that's all my digression on Hungary for the moment, but they sort of proposed this. So the anti common turn, but back to this, the anti common turn pact, and I've talked about it. Um, Fascists are a corporatist uh, ideology that comes out of socialism. National socialism is not fascism. And I even theoretically, supposedly, um, uh, responsible historians use German fascism and that kind of stuff. It's national socialism, people. It's Nazis. They are different. They the Nazis deceive the rest of the world into believing that they are fascists. They are not fascists. They do not follow the fascist um, economic and other programs. They are a totalitarian system, yes. Um, but they also have socialistic elements, but um, they are anti turn in two major ways. Um, one, that Communist international. That is an element in which they are massively um, anti, the international part. And secondarily, um, uh, wanting to abolish private property. The Nazis never want to um, abolish private property. Although, like fascism, they do believe that um, the national body uh, is more important than the individual. So they wouldn't allow, say, a major company or a major um, rich person to do something that with their money that is somehow against the national interest. You know, if it's hurting the nation, oh, they'll do something about it. It's not, well, he has the right to do it. No, you're hurting the nation. Um, we'll have to take that away from you. Um, I guess theoretically, like as if there was a strike, not that there is going to be a strike in their, their national socialism, but if there was a strike and the owner goes, ah, okay, well, we're just going to close the factory. Uh, the Germans would go, the, you know, the Nazi government would go, no, nope, you don't get to close the factory. We need it open. People need the jobs. We'll, you know, not necessarily nationalize it. We'll solve it. You don't have the rights to close it down. Um, so, but they're not fascist, they're not, and yes, they borrow the arm salutes and other things, and it goes back and forth, and they wear color, funny colored shirts, and, but they're not fascists. Okay. But they're, but both of those ideologies, um, fascism and uh, national socialism, have very significant elements of socialism within them, with, within their thing. Japan does not. Japan is also very much not a fascist, very, very much not a fascist uh, country. It gets lumped into it. It would have been correct to say our fight against totalitarianism in World War II, but they couldn't say that because the Soviet Union was on their side and they were the biggest totalitarians of them all. Um, 
but and they were also aggressive. They had invaded and taken part of Finland in a war. They had demanded and occupied and taken over the Baltic states. Well, no, let's say Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia, three countries. They had demanded and taken over part of Romania. Okay, that's just, oh, and they took half of Poland in a military invasion, just like Hitler did. Okay, they were an expansionistic um, totalitarian government. So they were just as bad, just as evil, if not more evil than any of the Axis. So, the anti-Comintern Pact, in a way, is spoiled by Hitler and the Nazis because he proposes it. It's sort of like um, uh, today, in, at least in America, and I presume in many places in Western Europe, is that you know if, it, if Trump is for it, everyone else is against it. If Trump is against it, everyone else is for it. You know, Trump comes out and says, we need to stop these serial killers. You know, you're going to have the Democrats. Serial killers are people too. They need their right to go out and murder people. They're just like other people. Serial killers are people too. So anything that Trump is against, they're for. And if you may think I'm being silly about this, you should see some of the statements about from supposedly responsible publications and or elected officials coming out and saying, don't dehumanize MS-13. There are many just little kids trapped in the MS-13 trap. Oh, God, you're defending the... De you're, you're, def you're trying to humanize a, the one of the worst murdering drug gangs. What is it? Murder, rape, terrorize or something like that is their, their motto? Yeah, Democrats, just because Trump is against them, you've got to be for them. Oh, my God. But that's sort of what Hitler's doing here. Had this been not a German-centric uh, situation, I don't know if you would have seen um, uh, Chamberlain jumping on board. Um, definitely the French might not have. Because hell, they were you know, you don't know what what way they're going, but you could have eas you could have seen um, somebody like if Churchill had been in charge, and you could easily see other um, non-hardline countries in Europe getting on board that aren't specifically in alliance with Germany, and this just be a general anti turn pact, but it because it really gets pushed by Germany, it is both. An anti turn pact is the idea is, hey, we need to sort of show that, you know, sort of like a NATO idea in that if you attack one of us, you're at war with all of us. And we sort of kind of want to work together to oppose the Warsaw Pact. As it, Warsaw Pact was created after NATO as a reaction to NATO, but only as a de facto th or only as a de jure thing. It already, in fact, had long since, you know, occupied Poland and East Germany and um, Romania and Hungary and whatever else. So it was already, you know, Soviet puppet states. So we're going to we're going to go down this path, at least for now. Because we, too, are worried. Um, they were the Japanese were worried about communism in Japan, though I have yet to see. Any realistic. Signs that the communists were anywhere near popular within Japan. Of course, you're going to have intellectuals in all countries. Um, some of them are going to glom on to just any idea that people come along. It's like, um, you know, intellectuals um, or pseudo-intellectuals. Oh, well, Satanism isn't so bad or something like this. They're just trying to be rebels and trying to redefine terms. So you're always going to find a few writers, thinkers, or something jumping on any sort of, yeah, complete and total anarchism. All government must go. And if a town needs to decide something, they can get together as a body, you know, complete body of all the, of all the adults and then vote on, you know, whether we, you know, where are we going to lay the new sewers or how much are we going to spend, you know, you know, some sort of complete anarchistic type um, viewpoint. Yeah. Ah, uh, we would give them crude oil. No, we are st stocking up crude oil. Um, yeah, 
And you think you're going to get in power and dissolve your government while there are, um, oh, barbarians on the border. Whatever flavor of barbarians, whether they be real actual Mongols on horseback or um, Stalinistic um, governments that are um, willing to invade you. You want to abolish your army and your central government and everything else. And you somehow then think that by doing all of this, you're not going to be invaded. Uh, you know, so uh, that's... Now, I, again, I get some of them are just um, utopianists. And this is the way it ought to be. And they, you know... And, and want to sort of be the rebel rousers, want to be the, um, didn't we just, engineers upgrade, okay, that, okay, that's grayed out, and so we'll go to anti-tank, anti um, because I do think, um, well, heart attack, yeah, reduces softness a little bit, but yeah, it'll be good. And so, like I say, they don't even necessarily really mean it. They just want to have a political argument. And so that's sort of my, and like I say, the, the military and certain elements within the Japanese government were very much actually afraid of um, communists, as well as just sort of, it was sort of the accusation against um, people that weren't going along mostly with the military uh, element of the government, but weren't going along with their plan. It was just sort of an accusation to be thrown around. You know. But I don't see any real um, strong moves either towards communism or um, any sort of socialism. And this is why um, Japan is very much not fascistic. And that they, to the best of my knowledge, again, and unlike Germany... In the late 30s, I know very well. So when I say the best of my knowledge, I'm pretty sure that it, you know something is or isn't. But um, to the best of my knowledge of Japanese government, there were little or no social welfare type programs um, going on in any sort of national, you know, national sort of way. Um, it just Japan just wasn't there yet. They're still outside of some of the really nice developing major cities. Um, and even there, it's of uh, limited um, stuff going on, meaning you get outside of some of the, you know, multi-floored apartment, um, you know, modern buildings. You're going back to old Japanese architecture that may or may not have indoor plumbing. I don't know how widespread that is, but I know out in the countryside it is not a... Uh, thing to it necessarily expect that you have indoor plumbing in Japan at least for all I'm sure there's some level of uh, elites that may have that but um, as well as electricity so um, Japan just isn't there yet to be on the fascist bandwagon it was ultra nationalistic it w did have a pseudo religious type ideology of um, with the emperor and it was um, aggressive internationally you know even well before you sort of get into oh fascist type even before fascism was ever even um, the, because it's right around 1900 they take Korea and sometime around that they take um, Taiwan um, so you know when it's still almost feudalistic, um, they're taking these other things, and that's in some ways, in some ways, it still sort of is at this time feudalistic, and we'll talk about that more, I'm sure. But you know, so it is, and it is aggressive, and it is militaristic. So to some sort of vague grouping of fascist countries, they want to put it, but it is not fascism. And that is important to understand. Okay, so we have got great war analysis to this point, allows us to expand. These and we will as some of these other doctrines come about. And I think this is a good time to end the episode here. 
I want to thank you all for watching. Thank you for liking the videos if you would. And um, if you haven't already made it at this point, you didn't take my first suggestion to please subscribe to the channel. And uh, of course, post comments, questions, corrections. Um, love hearing from you. I know there has been a few um, viewers. Um, I'm maybe could find one or two from Japan that have posted in the past though and I say from Japan one of them I believe was Swedish or, but some Scandinavian country who was had, it was a long-term resident in Japan um, but I would love to hear from some of you guys um, now that I'm doing a Japanese series and just you know either let me know that you're Japanese or you are a resident in Japan I just may have questions for you that you may be able to answer you know simple stuff at some point it would be very interesting to know as I will be very critical of Japan and um, I would love to hear um, feedback because I get a lot of feedback from Germans as I'm critical of Germany now could be saying, well, that's National Socialist Germany. Yeah, yeah, but it's still Germany. And yes, Japan still has an emperor. And it's still the same imperial family. So in, in essence, it's even though it's been through the um, MacArthur Shogunite, um, it's still the same con um, contiguous government, if you will, of World War II. So I will be highly critical of Japan and its actions, like I've been highly critical of Germany its actions. And I... Like I say, I, basically, it's um, often, I haven't looked recently, I'll see now that we're doing much more Japanese content, it's often been sort of, whether it was Britain or Germany, where the, the uh, going back and forth for top viewership uh, that isn't American. Um, but I don't know how, what we'll do. And now I do also know that levels of English language um, speaking or understanding percentile at least in Japan is much less than it is in Germany so I know we won't have nearly the Japanese based viewership but I still love to hear from you see you next time